In today's video, we're going to be going through a live example of an analytical app on Autodesk Designer. We're then going to be introducing some key, key interface tools and how we can use them and implement them. And then finally, we're going to try and understand how we can change the user interface. Hello guys, welcome back. This is Archie from the Information Lab. And in today's video, we're going to have a little bit more of a deep dive into applications. So on the screen here is one that I've made earlier. Um, this isn't ready, steady, cooked. However, I'm going to use that phrase. Um, and in this workflow, it basically um, is working out some sort of exchange rates, basically. So um, let me just talk about the bulk of the workflow first. We have got two input sources. One of them um, basically says the rate for a specific code on a current date. Um, and the other one is basically just a list of information um, for sales, for example. Um, and what we've done, we've joined them together. And seen as though there's two fields that are the same, we've joined them on order ID um, and, sorry, date and currency code. Um, so we've joined them together. Um, we've then used a formula tool which calculates the value at a specific rate. And then we have outputted this, outputted this. So what we've done, we have run this. We've ensured that our workflow works successfully and we're happy. Once we are happy, now we can move on to start making this an application. Right. So in this particular case, we want to allow a user to choose a particular file. Right. So we so we, so we want to make this as dynamic as possible. And the way that we do that, we are going to drag on this file browse tool. So what I should say, as soon as you drag an interface tool onto the uh, onto the workbook, it turns it into a YXWZ, which means that it's an application. Right. The way that I think about it is WZ kind of seems like a wizard. So you're basically a wizard if you make an analytical app. OK, so the first thing that we do is that we need to make sure our prompts are clear and concise. So here, we want to we wanna tell the user to choose um, an input. Brilliant, can't spell. Um, and these are going to be the questions that are asked to the user when we when f from the user interface. So we want to make these nice and clear. OK, and then what we do, we need to drag whatever whatever we want this to affect. About, OK, so we want this to affect the input tool. So we were going to make this connection. Automatically, this action tool um, is in between the connection. And this basically asks you to tell Alteryx what this action tool needs to do. So in this case, we want this to update the entire input data tool. OK, so that's great. And then if we click Run and click this li little wizard icon or, or wand icon, I guess, in the top right corner, we can see how this is our first question, right? So we've already started making an app. Um, this is really useful to see how your app looks as you go along the, make, uh, well, the, the application process, just to make sure that everything is in order. OK, so now that we've allowed um, the user to choose a specific input, we also want to allow the user to choose a specific output, because I can imagine if we're using a completely different data, data set, then we want, it to, want to call it something different. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the same file browse tool, and we're going to drag this to the output. So once again, we want to call this a, a specific name. So we want to say select an output. And the only difference that we need to do, we need to tick this box that says save as dialog. So this basically allows all tricks to know that you are saving the output. OK, so that's the difference there. And then we, when we click on this action tool, we want to update the out, output data tool. And if we click run and click the wand again, now we can see that we have our first question and our second question. So there we go. So that's a good start. The next step is we basically want to control or allow the user to control what um, what exchange rate they're working on and what what they're joining with as well. So in this first case, we are going to be um, affecting this formula tool, and what we want to do, we want to change the unit cost to any field that um, well, it's dependent on the the incoming right. So if um, the incoming data is completely different. We also want to allow the, um, the fields to be dynamic along with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to use um, a drop down, which is just, um, let me try and find it, just here, right? 
And what we basically want to do, we want to make this dynamic. So first of all, we want to choose a field. So that's going to be our prompt. And say, for example, you bring one data set in, and it's got three fields that are named completely different to another data set. We want these options to update as well. So what we're going to do from the file browse input tool, we're going to drag this connection to this input. This ensures that when the file browse input is changed, the drop downs are also changed as well. Then we also get this option um, of drop downs just here. And this allows you to specify the data types that are in the drop down options. So the, a really good reason for this is because, so say if we're going to update a calculation, just like in this formula tool, we only want numerical da data types to be options, right? Otherwise, if someone puts a, a string in, then it could lead to an error. So what we're going to do, we only want the numerical values, so we're going to untick all of the other ones. Okay, so any of these data types we are happy with. What we're going to do next is we're going to drag this to uh, the tool that we want it to affect, and automatically, as it, as it has happened before, we, um, we now want to change this action tool. So what we're going to do, we're going to select what the action tool is going to, what it's going to, how it's going to affect it, and we want it to update a particular value. So we're going to leave that ticked. We then have this tree-like structure, and it allows us to choose a particular field that we wish to update, a particular field, string, data type. You can see all of the different options that you have. And in this case, we want to update unit cost to whatever the user wants to change, basically. And in this particular case, in our calculation, we have more than one field. So we want to keep the calculation the same. We only want to change the field unit cost. So the way that we do that, we head down to the bottom here, and we want to basically tell Ultrix, OK, so we want everything to keep the same. We only want unit cost to change. So we can remove all of this bit. And one thing that we should remember whenever we're changing fields is always remember to remove the square brackets as well. So it's only the oops, Daisy. It's only the value within the square bracket brackets that change. Okay. So now if we hit run and we click the, the wand icon, now what's gonna happen if you have a look at okay, so choose a field, we have no fields. And the reason for that is because we haven't chosen an input. So if we choose a particular input by this drop down, go on file, and in this case, I'm going to choose exchange rate lookup because I know it's the same as this input, and click open. Now when I click this drop down of choose a field, we get all of the numerical field types um, in that data set. So now we can choose rate. So that is how we can show that um, it can be dynamic. So if I change this input, then the ch choose a field options will be different. OK, brilliant. So now we've changed the formula tool. We now want to change the join tool. OK, so let's have a little look inside this. So what this tool allows us to do, it allows us to choose how we're joining the two different, um, the two different data sets. And because one of them is dynamic, we want to be able to um, allow the user to dynamically choose how they join. OK, um, so in this case, this is going to be static. So we've got date, currency, code, and rate. So we want to change the date and currency code from this left-hand side. So first of all, let's change the date, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to once again use a drop-down because we want to we allow the user to choose that particular field. So here, we're going to say choose a date. And once again, for the same reason as beforehand, we want to connect this output to this input, OK? And because we're asking uh, Ultrix to choose only a date, we can select only the date fields here. So if we do that, oh, OK, let's include time as well. It doesn't hurt. So now Ultrix is only going to select or allow the user to select um, fields that are, well, um, a date, basically. So now, once again, we're going to drag this here. Um, and the action tool is going to pop up. And now we, now we now need to explain to Ultrix what this action tool is going to do. OK, so what this action tool is going to do, we once again want it to update a value. And here we've got a slightly more complex tree structure. So as we've said, so if we open these, we can see what options we have to change. As we've said, from the second in input tool, we 
that's going to be static, so we don't want to change that. What we want to change is the value. So in this particular case, this is going to be the date field. So what we're going to do, we're going to click here, okay? And we're happy updating the order date. Okay, and you can see down here, um, there's no need to replace a specific string because order date is that one value. Okay, so now we're on to the final step. And what we need to do, we need to update the currency code. Okay, so once again, we're going to use the drop down. And the same reasons as before, we want it to be dynamic. So we connect it to the output of the dynamic input. And we're going to ask um, Alteryx to choose a currency code. Cook code, brilliant. And if we have a look at the input, we can see what sort of data type this is. And currency code is just down here. It's a, it's a string, okay? So we only want string values to be an option. So we can choose none, and then choose the four different string options. Excellent. Now, as usual, we want to connect it to the tool that we wish to change. Um, and then we need to tell the action tool what um, what value exactly it's updating. So once again, update value. We've explained why we want it to affect the first join tool, and we want it to affect a particular currency code. Brilliant. So now if we click Run, and we look at the wizard, or the wand, I don't know why I'm saying it wizard, we now have all of the options available, okay? Um, and this is great, so we can have a look at, okay, so let's have a look at a file. We want to choose a particular file. We want to have a look at an output. Let's just call that output. Um, so this, obviously, I've already done this before, so I've already got this saved, but you could type a new one out, depending on what you want to save it as. And now we'll have these options, which, um, and I know these are drop dropdowns um, for a particular field, and there's only one option. Um, but what, because it's dynamic, we need to give that sort of flexibility. Um, and there we go. So we have, we've been able to make this output, which is great. So when we click Finish, we can now see this output, um, and we can open it up in a particular place, um, and that's great. However, there's one section that we also need to think of. So say if, for example, uh, we don't choose a particular output, um, or if we don't choose a particular section, um, then we want to be able to return an error message and basically explain to the user why there is an error message. So what we can do is we can drag an error message from the interface tool and connect it to all of the tools that need to meet the conditions in order, in order um, for, the, for the workflow to run. Okay? So basically, the way that we do that, we want to connect all of the interface tools. So one from the dropdown, um, the files as well. And we basically want to say, if one of these options isn't selected, then we want to return an error. Because if you think about it, right, if we don't have an input tool, or if we don't have a particular field to join on, then it's going to return an error anyway. So in order to make it more user friendly, we want to basically allow the user to understand, OK, this is exactly the reason why it's not working, rather than it just saying error, which can be quite confusing. OK, so what we want to do, we basically want to um, say an expression. And if that expression is true, display a particular error message. So what we want, we want to basically say, if any of these um, input tools, or sorry, any of these interface tools are empty, we want to be like, there's a, there's a situation going on here. So if we include this piece of information where we say, OK, so if number one, or if number two, or if any of them are empty, then it's going to return an error message. And what number one, two, et cetera mean is it basically shows the different, um, the different interface options. And then the particular error, you can be as creative as you want. You can say uh, you haven't filled them all in with lots of angry faces because, oh, that's, that's I don't know what that is. That's just lots of eyebrows. OK, so that is our error message. So if we were to click Run and click on the wand, and we want to have a look at, okay, so say we've filled in none of them. We're going to have this error message which says you haven't filled them in with a weird bunch of characters. So that is how we would incorporate an error message to help the user understand exactly what they've done wrong.